So let's discuss some of the common case scenarios you encountered in day-to-day -day practice on HIV exposed infant and uh, HIV uh, positive pregnant and lactating women. So in the first case scenario, we have Mrs. A who was initiated on antiretroviral therapy in 2018 and she is on TLE regimen that is Sinopovir, Lamivudine and Efavirenz. She is adherent to ART. She has now reported to ART center and informs that she is two months pregnant. Her latest result of viral testing was negative and viral load was not detected. As a medical officer, what actions you will take? So in this case scenario, we will counsel her with respect to, we will transition her to TLD regimen. We will make her, check her at ERT adherence and we will link to BPTCT program. Counselor regarding protected sexual practices to avoid fresh HIV infection. And she should come for institutional delivery for interventions during labor, during delivery and timely ARV prophylaxis to the baby. And we will also counsel her about the feeding practices and care of the breast and nipples, nutritional supplementation, like any other pregnant woman, she should get regular antenatal visits, iron folic acid and calcium supplementation. So this is the basic first case scenario we'll get. So more and more uh, we go further, the scenarios will get different. In the second case scenario, we have Mrs. C. She has received triple drug ARV prophylaxis in 2012 during her first pregnancy. She was advised TLD regimen once a day as prophylaxis and it was stopped seven days after discontinuation of breastfeeding. This is according to the old guidelines. Now she reports to ART center with two months of pregnancy. Her latest CD4 count is 420 cells per cubic millimeter. So what ART regimen should be advised? As we all know that based on current guidelines, we have to start her on ART, that is TLD regimen, irrespective of her CD4 count, and she should be on lifelong ART on, on this TLD regimen. And how frequently we give? We give one, one tablet once a day. Okay. So irrespective of her CD4 count, irrespective of her stage of HIV, TLD regimen has to be started. And uh, what about uh, in the question two, we have her mother's viral load was done at 34 weeks of gestation. It is 500 copies. That is less than 1000 copies per ml. And she plans to breastfeed a baby. What infant prophylaxis should be advised and for what duration? So we have to give, uh, we, here we see that she is a, uh, here the baby comes in low risk. And in low risk babies, she is not exposed previously to nevirapine. So we can give nevirapine prophylaxis. And as she was on triple drug ERT regimen, uh, Chances of archived resistance are minimal, so we can continue with nevirapine syrup. And her viral load is suppressed, so the baby becomes a low risk for HIV transmission. So regardless of the type of feeding, the duration of ARB prophylaxis in the baby is 6 weeks. So in the case 3, we have Mrs. D. She has reported to ART center at 7 months of pregnancy. She is ART naive, that is she has never taken ART before. And her CD4 count is 385 cells per cubic mm. So what ART regimen she should be initiated on? So no doubt, whatever may be the scenario, only one thing we have to remember, all pregnant women should be on TLD regimen, one tablet once a day. And we should explain her need for lifelong ART adherence and not that she should not stop after a few days after delivery. And here they have done viral load of the mother at 36 weeks of pregnancy. It is 20,000 copies per ml. So our cutoff is 1,000 copies per ml. So anything more than 1,000 copies per ml, it is high viral load. And she plans to breastfeed a baby. So what infant prophylaxis we have to advise and what for what duration? So uh, previously uh, she is naive. So here the baby comes with high risk. So it is dual prophylaxis. That is syrup nevirapine once a day and syrup desidavudine twice a day has to be given. So both should be given for 12 weeks. So why 12 weeks? Because the mother has decided to breastfeed. So it is not exclusively replacement feed. Okay. So mother's viral load is more than 1000 copies per ml. So this infant becomes a high risk for HIV transmission. Two drugs that is nevirapine and zidovudine. Why 12 weeks? Because mother has opted for breastfeeding. If she has opted for exclusive replacement feeding here, the duration of prophylaxis would have become six weeks. So Mrs. E was advised a single dose of nevirapine and prophylaxis in her previous pregnancy in 2011. She was later initiated on TLE in 2014. And now she has reported to ART center at three months of pregnancy. So what ART regimen? So as we all know, irrespective of whatever prophylaxis and whatever uh, regimen she was before on, she should be on TLD regimen, expressing the benefit of doltegravir, which achieves faster viral suppression in these pregnant women. So even uh, TLD regimen is effective, even though... Uh, so doltegravir is effective, even if she has received a single dose of nevirapine previously. So continuing with the same scenario, the mother's viral load at 33 weeks of gestation shows 250 copies per ml and she plans to breastfeed her baby. So what infant prophylaxis you want to give here? So here, uh, though she has received nevirapine in single dose nevirapine in previous uh, pregnancy, there can be chances of nevirapine resistance. But the infant comes for low risk of HIV transmission. Hence, a single drug therapy that is zidovudine has to be started. The zidovudine dose is always twice a day. So how much duration we give? So low risk infants, irrespective of type of feeding, we give for six weeks. So why zidovudine we are using here? Because there is history of use of nevirapine in the previous pregnancy. Hence, there is chance of NNRTA resistance in the mother. And subsequently, this resistance may be transmitted to the infant. Hence, we have changed from nevirapine to zidovudine in this. And single drug only we can give because the infant classifies for low risk of HIV transmission. 
six weeks because regardless of type of feeding in low risk of transmission, we give six weeks of therapy. Coming to case scenario five, Mrs. F is asymptomatic postnatal mother who is living with HIV. She presents to ERT center three days after her delivery. A 3D4 count is 550. She has opted for exclusive replacement feeding. So weight of the baby is 2.4 kg. What is the next step in the management of the mother? So mother, irrespective of whenever she presents, she should be on lifelong ART and she should be on TLD regimen, one tablet once a day. She should be linked to PPTCT program. We should explain her regarding feeding practices, care of nipple and other uh, things and nutritional counseling has to be done. If possible, counsel her regarding the benefits of breastfeeding and try to put on exclusive breastfeeding. If she has opted for exclusive replacement feeding, uh, we have to uh, try to tell her that there is good ART adherence, there is less chance of transmission. And we should also counsel her regarding protected sex practices. So how will you manage the baby in this scenario? So all babies uh, should, uh, should be given ARV prophylaxis. So what ARV prophylaxis is? Dual ARV prophylaxis. Okay, that is syrup nevirapin once a day and syrup zidovudin twice a day. How long we should give? Six weeks. Why six weeks? Because he has opted for exclusive replacement feeding. So how much nevirapin and zidovudin? One ml nevirapin once a day and one ml zidovudin twice a day based on the weight of the baby. Here weight of the baby is 2.4 kg. So we give one ml nevirapin and one ml zidovudin. So we have to explain her that even though 72 hours have passed after the delivery, Still, uh, ARV prophylaxis works, though the efficacy is less. And as the mother is ART naive, her infant becomes high risk. Hence, we are advising two drugs. We should uh, ensure that she is adherent to these two drugs. Six weeks, why? Because it is replacement feeding. <clears throat> so, Mr. Mrs. G was screened for HIV and found to be reactive in labor room. So, she was immediately given a single tablet of TLD by the labor room nurse. And she was linked to ART center. Next day, her confirmatory report from uh, ART center came that she is HIV positive. And weight of the baby is 2.8 kg. So, what was the next management of the mother? So we have to put her on TLD regimen and we have to link her to BPTCT program. Lifelong adherence to ART has to be explained. Care of breast and nipple has to be explained to them. Nutritional counseling and protected sex practices. And what about uh, baby if the mother uh, opts for breastfeeding? Here that she has been not on any uh, ARV previously. She was diagnosed in labor room. Baby becomes a high risk for HIV transmission. So we give dual prophylaxis. And so dual prophylaxis based on the weight of the baby. Here we give 1.5 ml nevirapine once a day and 1.5 ml zidovudin twice a day. And how long we have to give based on type of feeding now. In high risk, there are two options that how long we have to give. So she opts for uh, breastfeeding. So we give the prophylaxis for 12 weeks. And we have to explain her that with adequate ART, there will be optimal viral suppression in the breast milk. Coming to case scenario 7, Mrs. H is a 24-year-old newly diagnosed HIV positive pregnant woman. She is linked to ART. She is both HIV and HIV2 co-infection. She is three months pregnant now. Her CD4 count is 700. So what ART regimen? Whether it is HIV-1 positive, HIV-2 positive, HIV-1 and 2 combined positive, only one regimen, that is TLD regimen. And TLD is effective both in HIV-1 and 2 co-infections and lifelong adherence has to be taught. And how, how do you, uh, mother's viral load done at 36 weeks shows the target not detected. She plans to breastfeed. So what infant prophylaxis should be advised for her? So here, uh, what we should do is nevirapine doesn't work in HIV-2. So here we have to... Uh, the mother's viral load report done at 36 weeks of gestation is target not detected and she plans to breastfeed. So what infant prophylaxis would we like to advise and for what duration? So here mother is both HIV-1 and HIV-2 co-infection. So nevirapine doesn't work in HIV-2 infection. So we go for zidovudine here. The syrup zidovudine should be given twice a day and that is a drug of choice for infant prophylaxis. So why reason? As, we, as I already told, nevirapine will not be effective for HIV-2 infection. And here as the mother's viral load is adequately suppressed, that is less than 1000 copies, infant becomes a low risk for transmission. And based on, regardless of feeding, the duration in low risk transmission is six weeks. So six weeks of zero zidovudine twice a day is the infant ARV prophylaxis. <clears throat> Coming to case scenario eight, Mrs. I, a newly diagnosed person living with HIV, has recently been linked to ART center with a three months old baby. And she is breastfeeding her baby. And how will we manage this case? So we have to initiate the mother on TLD regimen after preparedness counseling. And we have to counsel her regarding the care of nipples and breast and feeding counseling and protected sexual practices so that she doesn't acquire any fresh infection. So how will we manage this baby who is already three months and she's exposed to HIV uh, since birth is. So immediately she has, the baby has crossed six weeks. So we will send her to ART center and we will send a dried blood sample for HIV DNA PCR. And as per the early infant diagnosis algorithm and beyond six weeks, we have to start the baby on cotrimoxazole prophylaxis therapy. And we have to get the baby evaluated from a pediatrician for any presence of clinical signs of HIV infection. And we have to do an e-referral, that is electronic referral to SASEP and PCOA for opinion on management of this child. And we have to immunize this child as per the schedule. And if the HIV DNA PCR comes as negative, we have to keep under regular follow-up. And at six months of age, again, we have to do a rapid antibody test. And again, if required, we have to do HIV DNA PCR if necessary. If the rapid antibody test comes positive, then we have to go for HIV DNA PCR, which 
this EID algorithm, the early infant diagnosis algorithm, we will discuss in uh, third part of this lecture series. And we have to take further decision. And confirmatory third antibody testing should be done at 18 months of age as per the current guidelines. So in coming to case scenario 9, Mrs. K was diagnosed with HIV recently. She has reported to ART center and informs that she is 6 months pregnant. Her CD4 count is 285 cells. Which ART regimen we have to start her? We have to start her immediately on TLD regimen. And she also needs to be started on cotrimoxazole prophylaxis therapy because her CD4 count is low. And because CD4 count is less than 350 cells per cubic millimeter, mother has to also should be started on cotrimoxazole prophylaxis therapy. And uh, she gets a viral load tested at 36 weeks of gestation. It is 55,000 copies. And she plans to breastfeed a baby. What infant prophylaxis we should advise her? And what if the zidobidine syrup is not available in this scenario? So as we all know that it is a high risk uh, baby because her viral load is not suppressed. So we have to go for zero dual prophylaxis. Routinely, what dual prophylaxis we give? Syrup nevirapine and syrup zidobidine. So here, syrup zidobidine is not available, specifically they are telling. So instead of syrup zidobidine, we will go ahead with syrup lopinavir ritonavir combination. But syrup lopinavir ritonavir combination has to be started only after 14 days of life because up to 14 days, there is uh, inadequate absorption and elimination of the drug. So baby may have toxicity in the first 14 days. So how long we should continue this prophylaxis? It is a high-risk case and based on feeding, we have to give for 12 weeks of age. Okay. So coming to the last scenario, we have Mrs. L, 26-year-old. She is registered at ART Center in 2012. She was initiated on TLE based on uh, earlier uh, the guidelines in 2015. She became lost to follow up and after one year, uh, she shifted to her village. She has now reported in active labor. So how do we manage this patient? So we have to immediately start her on AL TLD regimen. And we have to immediately should be linked to ART Center in the next day after starting of ART. And she should be adherent to the ART health lifelong. And uh, we should talk Counsel her regarding the care of nipple and breast, feeding, counseling, and protected sexual practices are routine. And she delivers a baby by normal vaginal delivery, weight of the baby is 3.2 kgs, and she opts for breastfeed. So, what is a, how do we manage this baby if syrup zidobidine is not available and syrup ritonavir, lopinavir ritonavir is also not available? In the previous scenario, we saw that syrup zidobidine was not available, so we used to use syrup lopinavir ritonavir. Now, in this scenario, both are not available. So, how will we go ahead? So, here the uh, baby qualifies for high risk because mother has been directly coming to labor room with HIV positive status. So, we have to start on dual prophylaxis. So, dual prophylaxis is usually syrup, zidobidine, and nevirapine. So, here what happens is syrup zidobidine is not available. So, next uh, option we go for is lopinavir ritonavir combination. Here, syrup zidobinavir, uh, zidobidine, and lopinavir ritonavir both are not available. So, we will be advised to give pediatric ZLN fixed drug combination tablet that is zidobidine, lamivudine, and nevirapine fixed drug combination pediatric tablet comes. So, as per the weight band of the child, we have to give. So, how long we should give this prophylaxis? So, we have to give for 12 weeks because mother opts for exclusive breastfeeding. So, here 60 mg tablet comes. We can disperse one dispersible tablet twice a day for 12 weeks. Okay. So, I hope you are uh, well versed with all the case scenarios. So, you will get one of these case scenarios only in your day to day clinical practice. So, I hope if you go through uh, my first uh, lecture and the second case scenarios, you will be able to uh, handle most of the case scenarios you will get in your uh, private clinical practice and also during your ward rounds also. Thank you, one and all.